Welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, friend. Grab yourself a cup of tea. This is a program I've looked forward to for a long time, but before I tell you about it, I just want to welcome you and I uh, hope you feel that welcome. Uh, maybe you're channel surfing and it's the first time you've noticed this program. Please stay with us. My name is Arthelaine Rippey. The program is Home Keepers, which I hope is self-explanatory. <clears throat> so welcome, one and all. Now, the reason I'm excited about this program is because, well, I've noticed on Oprah Winfrey's channel that she has a program called Where They Are Now. And she brings back guests who were on the program most many years ago. That's what we're doing today. And uh, today my guests are my daughter, Meredith Kaufman, and her good friend, Diana Burgess. And they were right here on this set 10 years ago this month with uh, some incredible stories. My daughter was just uh, still in the recovery process of uh, breast cancer and all that goes with that. And Diana was still recuperating from, get this, a plane crash when there was a time that they wanted to amputate her legs and um, God intervened and the girl has actually become an aerobics <laughs> instructor. You can't keep Diana down. These girls are friends from high school. This is gonna be a great show, I'm glad they're here. And um, Meredith's gonna cook with me today in the kitchen. And I can tell you, she's a very good cook. She's very well organized. She knows her way around the kitchen and I'm delighted to have them both. Before I join uh, Meredith though, I wanna again offer you this book, Bible Basics for Everyone. This is just a gem, my friends, for anybody, whether you've been a Christian a long time, there might be things here you've forgotten or overlooked, or if you're a brand new Christian, this can give you a jump start in your Christian life. And it's yours for any gift. You choose what you want to give. Our address is on your screen. That's Home Keepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And, uh, <clears throat> Just use that to write to us and, and send the gift, anything you choose, to help, stay, help us stay on the air. And we'll get it uh, right out to you. And I'm positive this will be a blessing to your life, no matter where you are in your Christian walk. Now I've joined Meredith. Welcome. Hi, Mommy. I think it's been 10 years since you've been here. <laughs> at least, yeah. Well, yeah. gee, uh, this, show, is, at least. this isn't her favorite thing. But, boy, this program, I am, I am excited about it. Okay. Well, I'm excited because I'm going to make my banana pudding pie. All right. It's a recipe I kind of got off a box po box top, but then added to it and, and refurbished it a bit. So what you're going to do okay. is just take your banana mm -hmm. and peel it and then slice about a quarter of an inch slices. We're going to line the bottom of our graham cracker okay, crust. Okay, shall I line it? Yeah, okay. you slice that up. While you're doing that, I'll take our few ingredients we have. I think there's just five, actually. We have a half cup of whipped cream. And for this, I just use the ready-made. Don't whip it yourself. Also a half cup of sour cream, whole These sour cream. These are things you could have in your fridge most of the time. Oh yeah, this is a perfect dessert for summertime. It's easy, it's no bake, it's light, and it's refreshing. How long does it, should it chill? Uh, we'll get to that, but okay. um, about an hour. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and then you, um, we'll mix this up first. Mix these two together. There we go. You ought to see this girl on Thanksgiving, mix I'm this. telling you. This is already kind of cool, uh, warmed up a little bit, so that's good. She conquers and then the kitchen. we take um, vanilla instant pudding, and we put that in here, and a half, one and a half cups of skim milk. Pour that all in together, and just mix that up. Do your boys like this? Oh yeah. In fact, the one I pre-made was um, in the house last night, and I wasn't there, and. It almost got eaten. <laughs> but um, you just mix this up till it's nice and smooth. Um, get all the lumps out. Just kind of splattering. That's all right. Okay, just line that real good. And then the last thing is about um, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of vanilla. And that's all the ingredients. Now, will that thicken up? Oh, yeah. The instant pudding will, it'll thicken. As we, you, we pour it in there, you'll see it start to, um, to set up a bit. But you just wanna make sure you have all the lumps out and it's nice and silky smooth. And where did you 
say you got this, you got the idea, but you also I got it off a box. Tailored it for yourself. Yeah, and then I made it into a pie. What was that's it? That's good. It was if just it wasn't a, a pie. It was like a banana something, I don't know. It was on a box of vanilla wafers. Right. So, then you just take your mixture and pour it in to your, oh, and I you can see it already setting up a little bit. I took your spatula. Just pour that in there. Well, it looks good. And then to top it off, make it a little prettier, take some unsweetened chocolate shavings and just get it on there as much with, as you want. With her boys, it's a miracle that it made it because they're like over it. six feet tall and they it's eat good. a lot. So then just put it in the fridge for an hour or two and it's real good if you have some fresh strawberries or fresh Ooh, that raspberries to put on top. That would be and good. And this is the one from last night. You can see how well it sets up. Well, you could take this to a friend if you know, yeah. if you run out the heat too much. Let's. Uh. Well, it does hang together good. <laughs> wow, see I said we should have had one on the plate so they would look pretty. Gosh. <laughs> what do I know? Yeah, I would like um, I'm not the TV personality. Yeah. Mm. See. What is there good? Go. See, that's what it's supposed to look that's like. That's very good. Get my close up. It tastes different than what I thought it would. Yeah, it's it's very not light. overly powering banana. Mm because it's a vanilla mix. It's very light. That would, if you didn't want the crust, you could just put in a sherbet glass. You put in sherbet glass, yeah. In fact, one time I made too, I put too much milk in because I forgot the recipe. Mm -hmm. So it's still set up a little bit, but we just put fresh fruit in there and it was like a nice little custard mm -hmm. with fresh fruit. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Like it. Good. All, all right. right. All if you want this recipe, we'll send it to you. <laughs> the information's coming up on your screen and um, you can email us and we'll be glad to send it to you that way or write to us. And uh, if you don't have a computer, we'll send it to you that way. Now stay and we're gonna get an update on the stories of Diana Burgess and Meredith Kaufman. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Welcome, girls. Ten Hello. years later. The Lord's been good, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Uh, we're going to show a little bit of the video of when you were here before. Um, we'll just talk about it, and um, we, won't, we won't turn the sound on. But oh, Look at that hair. Um, <laughs> oh, my <Wow>. word. <laughs> was your hair just growing out for the chemo? Yes. I'm, oh, my goodness. I'm not a short-haired person. I think I cut my hair just for her, so she doesn't <laughs> feel bad. Thanks, Di. <laughs> Oh my God! Say that's her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're going to fast forward. Uh, we have a picture of uh, Meredith's family, and uh, she has a wonderful husband who is a teacher, Chris Kaufman, and her boys Caleb and Sam. And there they are, those handsome Lovely men. Family. My boys. And uh, they're wonderful, wonderful gentlemen, and they are Jesus followers, and that's what's important good looking bunch and we have a picture of diana's family today and you're a grandma i am that the doesn't best. seem right the best. there they are can you tell us who they are yes that's my sweet husband of 33 years ed and our son is far right chad and his beautiful white Brittany. and that was brianna when she was just a baby and she's now three and they have another one beau and he just turned one and then our beautiful daughter, Mallory, and her handsome husband, Tim. Oh, man. So that was a while back. <clears throat> it's, um, it's just wonderful to look back, you know, and see where you've come from, where you were. <clears throat> you girls played basketball no. yeah. in high school. Oh. Yeah, basketball. And I want to tell you a little story. Because <laughs> I was watching their basketball game and sitting on the front, front bleacher, <clears throat> And I had this nice daughter. She's really a good kid. And 
you know, she had friends and she played the harp. She was just good all around. And I was sitting so close to her, and she's playing basketball. I saw her go after this girl and I saw murder in her eyes. I, I toughened actually, her up in I, sports. I saw something <laughs> I had never seen before. Like, girl, you touch the ball, you're dead. <laughs> well, you should have tried to round third on her when we play softball together. <laughs> We were playing for a Christian team. Too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She almost got us in a few little altercations. <laughs> I'm competitive. What can I say? Well, that's um, that's a good <laughs> quality. You want to win. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to go back over uh, some of the things that we talked about last time. Um, obviously, you were still in somewhat recovery because your hair. Yeah, I had finished everything, uh, all the chemo but your hair and everything, come but back. the hair was growing back, yeah, so I was through all the surgeries and all. And the, I think the minute that Meredith was diagnosed, here comes Diana. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you were there all the way. You were there for the surgeries. And <clears throat> I've always felt that nursing and teaching are calling. Mm -hmm. And you can tell the nurse who's called, and you can tell the teacher who's called, and you can tell those who aren't. And Meredith was in the hospital really having a rough day, and here comes Diana. And this nurse, God love her, wherever she is, but she was jerking around on those drains, you know. And Diana steps right up, <laughs> gave her a little nursing lesson, didn't you? I'm competitive, and I'm going to take charge. Yeah. <laughs> well, these people are going to learn a lot about me today. <laughs> we need a lot of people like you. <laughs> then, um, Diana, I want you to tell your story. You were a flight nurse. Right. How long had you done that? I had done that for 15 years. I was the chief flight nurse for an international uh, critical care air ambulance based here out of Clearwater called Care Flight. All over the world? We transported patients all over the world, yes. Did you go get them or? Yes, a lot of times back? we were going to get somebody, possibly a, an American who was abroad and had something happen to them. Or it could be that we were taking maybe a Canadian back to have open heart surgery after they had a myocardial infarction. Um, one of the last flights I did before my crash was a little Guatemalan girl who had gotten burned severely and Ooh. we picked her up and flew her to Boston. So it's that it was hard all to deal with. It is, especially with children, mm -hmm. especially with children. OK, and you crashed in Kentucky, right? Right. It was in uh, August 30th, 2002. We were landing and I was bringing a woman up there with end stage cancer to see her specialist. And we lost all brakes and all hydraulics and went off the end of the runway doing about 200 miles an hour, went off a 60-foot cliff across six lanes of highway, uh, on fire, and the impact uh, killed my patient immediately, um, and it critically injured the rest of us, but I was the most critically injured. It had uh, torn my all my supporting ligaments and made my legs go backwards and ruptured some major arteries down there, punctured a lung, broke my back. Um, so that is a total miracle because we were trapped in a burning aircraft and I had to cry out to God to save us and boy did he in a big way, spectacular. And during the, just trying to figure out if, if you could be put back together, right. wasn't there some thought that they would amputate your legs? Right, I had to sign a consent as I went in to have a femoral popliteal bypass that if it was unsuccessful, they would have to possibly amputate my legs. Mm -hmm. So that was scary. And um, then after that, they weren't sure if I would ever walk again. And um, I just knew the guy that pulled me out of the aircraft wasn't going to leave me. Didn't you hear them talking about the amputation? Well, no, they said it directly to me as I had to sign the consent. Uh, this was in the University of Kentucky. I had to sign it on the consent. And it was very scary because I was there all by myself and didn't know any of the medical staff. And uh, it was pretty scary. And then. Uh, they each had a road of recovery. Mm. Um, I go back to, uh, Meredith, I don't know if you remember all this or if you um, even knew at the time, but I was sitting in the waiting room with Chris and you were in surgery and and he just left. He said, I'll be back. And he told me later that the Lord kind of spoke to him and said, it's not, you know, it's not going to be what you think. It, it is. It is cancer. Well, this was during my biopsy mm. surgery. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The first one. Uh, and the Lord spoke to him, but He said, "But I'll be with you." Mm -hmm. Remember that. And then, after the biopsy, and you were, uh, you had a 
few weeks before the surgery. Didn't you tell me that you, you were walking the dog or something and you felt like the Lord assured you? Well, um, two days after the, my diagnosis when I was walking Harry, um, I was just talking to the Lord and just said, you know, I don't have anything to, to bring to this. I can't, I can't handle this. I've never been a sick person. I've never had to deal with that. And, and I said, no matter how bad it gets, I, I promise that I'll believe your word is true. And um, I'll stay faithful to you, but you have to promise me mm -hmm. that you're going to carry me through this because mm -hmm. I can't walk it. And then it wasn't until the night before my surgery that um, I had been real brave and everything had been, you know, very positive. But the night before, when the rubber hits the road, you know, the next day it's, it's coming, uh, I just had a, this wave of fear that um, I can't do it. I can't, I can't let them go and you know, take off my breast. I can't go through chemo. I can't go bald. I can't do any of this. You got to get me out of it, God. And I just started begging him and crying out to him and um, just wailing on my couch down at about three in the morning. And I heard somebody say, Meredith. And I heard it again. And I popped my head up and I didn't see anybody. There's no one there to see. But as sure as you're sitting here, he was there. And he said, I told you I'd be with you. We're going to go through this together. And that peace came. Oh. And I went upstairs and fell asleep. And the next morning got up. And there were some tears still, but mm -hmm. that peace never left. And that's the peace that passes all understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I signed that consent, that, that, that warmth, that flood, like you said, you're still concerned. It's still there. Yeah. The fear's still there. But yet you know his word is true. His, his promises word. are mm -hmm. true. He's not going to leave us or forsake us. She's one of the few, maybe the only uh, person I know where she heard the Lord call her name. Isn't that amazing? The Bible says yeah. he, knows, he knows our name. Um, so we'll fast forward 10 years. I got a, this, I don't know if you remember this story, but um, I had a, two tickets to Riverdance. And I always wanted to see that. If you ever get a chance to see that, I mean... Don't pass it up, but it's the Irish dancing, and it's so fast, it's, it's superhuman. Well, she had a harp job, and um, I had a ticket, and I don't know if it was your idea or mine. I said, maybe Diana would want to. I mean, she'd been through hell <laughs> and uh, thought it might lift your spirit. So I picked her up. I think we went to get something we to eat. We did. And so we joined the show, That's and at wonderful. intermission, you're next to me, and there's an old guy sitting next to you intermission she and the old guy are trying to get out of this I mean, it was, but you're using the cane at that time yeah I was yeah oh she out. was hobbling she really was hobbling. <laughs> and the old guy said i just had a hip replacement and she said i was just in an airplane crash <laughs> <laughs> i always want to try to one-up somebody no, yeah <laughs> man that'll do yeah, it, you always that'll that do one it one. for sure for sure but you talk about an overcomer because you actually yeah. taught aerobics well i had taught aerobics yeah. prior to that and but I mean, uh, we don't expect them when legs have been no, turned backwards. No, no, I was really unsure. And um, I was actually doing rehab at the uh, physical therapy place and then was able to actually go back to the gym where I taught aerobics and work with a physical therapist one on one there. And there just happened to be a day that one of the step instructors didn't show up. <laughs> and they're like, Died, you want to teach? And I'm like, Hmm. And I really think it was of the Lord mm -hmm. because I went in there and I put the you know bench down flat and mm -hmm. threw the music on and, and taught and just sobbed tears of joy the entire time because he brought me not just back to walking but to be able to dancing. teach aerobics yeah. and dancing. Yeah. And, and, and I took that class. I think it was before my, uh, my all stuff, stuff started. You said, I'm teaching aerobics. And, and I thought, well, that'll be fun because I'd been working out a lot at that point. Yeah. And, and you, you, <laughs> you just kicked my behind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. Well, looking back, you know, what has it taught you? With her situation, yeah, she had two little boys. Mm. They were very young. And <clears throat> I've noticed one thing. Uh, she has a compassion for people with cancer. Absolutely. And uh, she's right there. Is it Corinthians where it says the God of all comfort who comforts us so that we in turn can comfort others right. with that comfort? So. Mm -hmm. I had gone through what I had gone through, and when I heard about what was going on with Mayor, it just felt, it felt natural. Be able to say, hey, girlfriend, I know this stinks, but I also know mm -hmm. 
you are going to get through this and he's going to mm -hmm. carry you through this and you're going to see all the people that he brings around you to be the hands and feet of Christ and it's going to be awesome. And I see her boys now, how awesome they are. I see my, my, my children and I'm sure like yours, they had accepted Christ at an early age, but they walked this, this difficult road with us and they saw the promises are true. Mm -hmm. And it just really solidified mm -hmm. their personal faith mm -hmm. with our Savior, which I'd do it again in yeah. a heartbeat. If you've just tuned in, I'm talking to my daughter, Meredith Kaufman, and Diana Burgess. They were on a show 10 years ago <laughs> this month and uh, were recovering from uh, some very serious situations in their lives. And so uh, I want to have an update on this. And, and as I mentioned, or they mentioned, really, it changes you forever, uh, makes you far more thoughtful. But uh, for Meredith, your great-great-grandfather was a preacher, your grandfather, your dad, your brother, mm -hmm. and I won't go through all the but Ma, I'm so proud of the missionaries and the, your cousins. And mm -hmm. we're, we're on Facebook with cousins in Cambodia uh, and uncles. But I've often said Meredith is the best theologian in the family, which she wouldn't agree with. But the reason being, you've been in a Bible study for how many years? Well, a couple of different ones. I was in one for seven, and then this current one, I think I've been in five or six. And I mean faithful, mm -hmm. really faithful. And one of the best times I can remember is sitting around the table, I think it was a Christmas table, her and her brother <laughs> sparring because her brother's a pastor too and uh, how, how she held her own. Uh, what prompts you to do that and stay in it? I want to know Christ better. I want to, I want to model him to my children. Mm. I want to be a, a witness to his love and faithfulness mm -hmm. to those I come in contact with. Yeah, but I'm telling you, she can go deep. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not challenging her. Uh, no, but um, as, you, uh, as you look back over the last 10 years, would you trade mm. what you've learned, even in spite of the pain and the, the anxiety? Because you had children too, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. My children were 16 or 14 and 18 at the time, and now I have grandchildren. Yes, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it at all. Like I said, he, he proved who he was, who he said he was. All those stories we told our children, all the things we learned growing up in a Christian home and going to Christian schools, um, it was played out. It was proven. But you are a daughter of Christians. Yes. And how far back? Wow. Great, great parents, great grandparents, I believe, yeah. But my parents are strong Christians. In fact, today would be my dad's 80th birthday. Um, he passed away about six, six months ago, but just, yeah, wonderful parents. Very blessed, I know that. Well, that's one thing I try yeah. to get across to the Homekeepers viewers, mm. and that is the payoff, yeah. if you'll serve the Lord. Uh, it's it's going to be paid off for generations, and, right. and your generations and hers uh, who've been in heaven a long time, um, they're still, I think God said, to the thousandth generation right. of the righteous. The, right. the unsung hero in both our stories is our husbands. Right. That's you know, very so, true. And her, I mean, both of them, but hers is a paramedic, and she was couldn't do anything for herself for like four months when you had those rods yes. in your legs, so yes. he had to do everything for her. And, and my husband, who's not medic, uh, medically gifted at all, he had to do some medical things for me that were totally out of his comfort zone. So both are... They fulfill their vows in And that you're way. still married. Yes. Still married, Happily. better than ever. <laughs> well, you were, you were 100% invalid, really, yes. for a while. Oh, yeah. He had to do absolutely everything, everything. for you. Mm -hmm. And Chris is an athlete, so I can't picture him changing drains. But no, he but did. he did. He had to change the dressing on a very nasty, gnarly scar that I never even looked at. <laughs> I don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what it looks like. Yeah. So yeah, you know, there's it. so many stories here of God's faithfulness because he is faithful, but then when you see how that's transmitted to people mm -hmm. and her children saw it. You know, I remember uh, your children are younger than hers, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, how old would Caleb have been? My boys were about five and eight. Yeah, I know that he was in a s circle with Lynette and, and, and he requested prayer for his mom. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, you wonder what kids that little, 
you know, yeah. are thinking, but even then they know. They do. They know that they can call on Jesus. That's right. And yeah, I remember sitting there when I was getting ready to go to surgery and my son actually got through on the phone and I was so afraid at that point. And he said, and he was sobbing. He said, mom, listen, the prayer chain has started and, and people are praying for you. And that's when that flood of peace just filled, filled my heart. It really did. And I would also say that, you know, I was, we've both been very athletic. I'm a take charge kind of girl. And it wasn't until he took every ounce of power and strength away from me and I could not do anything that I realized in my own strength, I'm nothing. And I love the verse that says his grace is sufficient for us because his power is made perfect in our weakness. And so when people say, wow, how did you do that? I'm like, I didn't do that. I allowed God to do it through me. I heard uh, a translation of that scripture that I really like where Jesus is talking and says, it's in your weakness mm. that you become an illustration mm -hmm. of my strength. And I, my son is that. My son is that illustration. Mm -hmm. I believe Meredith is. Absolutely. And I, kn I know that you are. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's the bottom line. The Lord needed some illustrations <laughs> and, uh, for such lovely young women and to be passing that faith, mm. passing that faith along in a world that's going to hell in a handbasket. Absolutely. So needy. It's a perfect time. So are you 100% now? Your legs I and am. everything? I mean, yeah, I work out every day. I've got some great scars. Makes mm -hmm. for some great stories. Yeah. Like, hey, were you attacked by a that's shark? A nice that or looks like a shark. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm, I'm professor of nursing now. The Lord just kind of brought me full circle. I'm teaching at the college that I graduated, St. Pete College of Nursing. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, get to share my story with them, mm -hmm. get to share my faith with them, which is just awesome. Well, you're both trophies mm -hmm. of God's grace, Amen. no question. And I'm so glad that we, uh, I guess most viewers are just now meeting you because we've got so many more stations now, so many more viewers, but given a, a little background of what they've been through, but above all friends, it is the faithfulness of God, no matter what, no matter what, I remember one time laying on the floor and said, Lord, I don't really understand what's going on around here because my life was falling apart. But I said, there's no question I'm going to serve you. And that's a great payoff, my friends. Mm. Don't waver. Don't waver in this world with so much confusion. There's one place you can go and have peace and safety. And we are out of time, but join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.